Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our second webinar of the day. Uh, I'm Bill Wildey. I'm the Vice President for Development for CWS, and want to uh, thank you for taking the time to be with us. Uh, today's session, or this afternoon's session, will be on Crop Hunger Walk um, and Best Practices. We have two um, incredible people with us today. I think you're going to really enjoy this. Um, Janie Shilga and um, Mary Biedron. And both of them will be presenting two different PowerPoints, which will, um, what will happen is they will uh, do their PowerPoint, go through what they want to present. We'll have some time for asking questions um, at the end of each presentation. And then if we have time after that, we can take a couple of other questions as well. Uh, again, the way that you'll handle the questions is uh, if you're on the webinar and you're looking over on the right-hand side of your screen, you will see a little spot there where you can click and type in a question. Uh, if you want to type in your question because you're thinking of it at the moment that someone is speaking, that's fine. Uh, I'll then uh, ask the questions of the presenter. And uh, as you think of other things, please please feel free to type those in as well. If the uh, we have more questions than we have time, uh, I'll apologize to those of you for whom we don't get to your questions, but we will uh, do our best to get through as many of those as we can. As you probably, those of you who were on a little bit earlier, uh, might have known that, might have noticed that uh, Mary and, uh, and Janie both have their mics live, so when uh, one was whispering, I thought that was kind of good. <laughs> um, so we will, uh, they, they will be able to respond fairly easily to your questions without us having to turn, turn their mics on and off. Uh, Janie, I've known for quite some time, and actually Janie uh, Shilga and I uh, went to Honduras as part of a group together many years ago. She's been the coordinator of the Red Bank, New Jersey Crop Hunger Walk since 1984. And under her leadership, the funds that are raised by that walk have grown from 37,500 in 1988 to 114,000 in 2012, making it the fourth largest crop hunger walk in the country and the largest all-volunteer-led walk. Um, the walk is organized by an adult coordinating committee and has a teen leadership committee as well. In tandem with their walk, they do a food collection, uh, collecting over 13,000 pounds of food in 2012. They have an art contest, um, photo op, uh, lug a jug brigade, educational displays, DJ, music and clowns. And she's also graciously hosted events for C CWS overseas partners. And she has participated in CWS sponsored overseas visits. Janie, thanks so much for agreeing to do, be a presenter today. And we look forward to what you have to teach us. Thank you, Bill. I, I need to thank you for inviting me to be on today. And it's been a learning experience to just put together a webinar. And for that, I have to give special thanks to our social media chair on our committee, Janice Awanek, who's been doing some wonderful things for us networking. And um, as you said, Bill, I have been a long time with Crop Walk. I said, can you believe this will be my 28th walk in 2013? Um, and the trips with Churchill Service and getting to meet some of the speakers have been an incredible experience. I just wanted to add to that little overall um, uh, paragraph you gave that Crop Walk to the Community Hunger Appeal of Church World Service and communion on congregations are the base. As some of these have cha had changed and grown smaller in some cases, we have reached deeper into the community to include other faith groups and private schools and public schools. Scout troops also, Rotary and other clubs in towns, and individuals round out our participation. From 15 churches raising $6,000 back in 1981. We've grown to include um, about varying from year to year 50 to 60 faith groups, 20 church schools, and participants from 28 towns. And we walk through three of those towns. And our main town is Red Bank, and that's our name. And our committees have grown along with the size of our walk to accomplish this. I, I'd like you to put the second slide on, and I'll talk about our committee. Thank you. Um, as I said, we're creating, building, and caring for adult and teen crop hunger walk committees. Um, and understanding how crop hunger walks help church world service to meet local and global ministry goals, that is really uh, an important um, first step. We choose our committee to represent the community and encourage teamwork by identifying our common values. We have um, ecumenical uh, committee members, uh, interfaith, secular, and intergenerational <laughs> with our teens. 
and we ask uh, active participants who have been coming to walks for some years to join the committee with a small task. And then they sometimes they're willing to take on a much bigger task just to deepen their involvement, and this keeps the committee growing. We distribute responsibilities and assignments according to um, time commitment, and then we learn about all the skills that, that, that come along with that. It's really wonderful. Um, informal gatherings, formal gatherings, small and large groups. And we do, uh, we are flexible with our meeting times. Uh, with the adult committee, we meet in the evening. With the teens, we have to pick other times sometimes in the summertime. So it varies. And we try to acknowledge as much as we can the volunteers um, contributions. It, they're just some of some of them just incredible amounts of time. Well, both individual and group uh, contributions are so important. We ask for input from each member and share ideas and committee work. And this even goes into our evaluation time. We ask for input there, and we involve as many as we can to reach the crop hunger walk goals. I just wanted to add to this that. Um, many of our committee members have been together for years and have become friends due to these common values. So we see each other quite a bit. We look to add one or two new members each year to share small tasks. And we invite relatives and friends and enthusiastic walkers. Committee spouses have um, come to realize that they might as well help us out. And they are wonderful, I must say. And they come to meetings, and they help on walk day, and they do recruiting, some of them, all season long. They set up and clean up and all sorts of things. All are a wonderful addition to our crop family. I just wanted to say we have, a, uh, among other tasks, we have a coordinator, a treasurer, chair people for social media, for materials, for registration, food collection, safety, the computer inputting, and area recruiters. It is very important to have area recruiters who will make personal contact with recruiters at houses of faith and schools to make sure they understand what to do, to pick up materials at our kickoff rally, and then to encourage walkers and follow up with support. This link is really, really crucial in keeping churches involved as pastors change and school leaders change. And a personal connection and being available for answering concerns is often the difference between success and Failure, not failure, but just not as a successful. <laughs> um, back in 1985, I met a new youth leader at a local church and asked her to join our committee. And the very next year, our first teens sat down with Sister Donna, three teens and the leader. And we now have 17 high schools represented on our teen committee. I work with it along with our uh, social media chair and other committee members. And it really helps to get this participation in the younger generation. The teens get together during the summer to talk up crop along the walk route, make posters, create a skit, make a public service announcements of some sponsoring businesses, and publicize the walk, all of which are posted on our website. And they have good support, and they really have a good, um, a good time doing this. Uh, we have key clubs that staff two of our water stops. And we have um, a photo op for crop at the local high school, the, the host high school, and that's also a key club uh, project. We have CBA boys recruiting a big team to handle the food collection. We, this all is possible because students need service hours. We sign for those, and we write recommendations for National Honor Society and various things, letters for college. And as a recognized charity, that helps them so they do ask us for them. We need young people who learn how to care for those less fortunate and have concern for injustices. And um, this, this um, is a training for life, as far as I can see. Um, we acknowledge the work, which is so important, as I said, um, by hosting an evaluation dessert and discussion about one month after the walk. And in the winter, we host a lunch and conversation with our regional Church World Service Associate Director and top corporate sponsors, key committee members, and graduating senior teen leaders. And every Advent season, I send Church World Service blanket cards to all the Crop Hunger Walk committee members. And these are really appreciated. I get people thanking me all year long. It reminds them of the ministry of Church World Service. We have a wonderful team. Um, 
The partners it would be the next um, slide you see it here, and we have 17 local partners, and we really think that is a key success a key to success with crop walks because we can choose those partners. They're all 501c3s, of course, and uh, they have to sign up six months ahead of the walk and ask to be part of it again each year and give us some financial statements. And then adult and teen committee members go to do visits to our partner programs and share reports, write posts for the website, and some volunteer at the partner programs. So we have a way of keeping track of them throughout the year, and um, that helps us pass on information to our WALK participants so they know how crop local funds are used to help local families. We link and share our crop activities on Facebook. They share theirs on ours. We share ours on their <laughs> website. For global programs, we share church will service hotlines, disaster responses, and action uh, requests. Um, I was going to tell you a little bit about um, how the local partners came into play uh, during the hurricane that we went through in late October. Um, some of our, a couple of our partners had to shut down because they were in areas where they were just totally flooded out. Um, at this point, they're all open again, and um, they worked very hard to get open, but they knew that the people that needed them had to have, had to have them. Um, the story of Hurricane Sandy just shows how Church World Service Ministry comes full circle to meet a local disaster because our social media chair kept track of the schools and churches that were affected as well. This resulted in Red Bank Regional High School, our host school, um, which had about 70 families displaced by the storm, along with other schools who wanted to respond as far as Pennsylvania even, and the staff from the Church World Service New York office, including Reverend John McCullough, plus four of our committee, um, were able to meet in Union Beach, a town nearly destroyed by the storm, to connect with these displaced families and help hand out tools, kits, gifts. There was a full dinner that one of the schools brought and handmade Christmas cards from some elementary school kids to the families. That was a very special time for everyone involved, and it was just a wonderful way to help us explain the work of Church World Service and the part that hunger walks have in their ministry. So next, we'll go to the next slide, thank you. Um, adult and teen committee calendar, just to give you an idea, with, we actually start before six months out sending out letters for uh, sponsors, for, for the top sponsors, because that is our foundation. But we begin with a meeting, both teen and adults together, to review the previous walk and set goals. And this is six months before our walk. And the area recruiters uh, start making their contacts following the first meeting to just let people know um, what the calendar is for the year. And the letters to all participating groups with dates of the kickoff rally and the walk go out after that first meeting. Four months out, um, in between, there's some work going on all the time, but four months out, both committees meet separately to work on assignments. The adult committee meets once during the summer and then also later to work on getting materials together and ready to go. But the teens meet maybe three times, maybe four. They seem to have a good time meeting. Um, they produce a skit. They walk through the town and talk up crop. They do some public service announcements at that time with their videos. And they, um, they, they make posters. They do all kinds of things. The area recruiters contact participating groups during that time to make sure that they're on board with things and get any help they need. And then six weeks out, we have a kickoff rally. The adult committee organizes that, usually the week after Labor Day, in our case, for a fall walk. And it includes a wonderful teen skit every year. They do a, a rhyme, or they do a, a rap, or they do just acting out something. But they're all pretty good, uh, good pretty good sports. Um, committee members and group recruiters and partners attend the rally to pick up materials and signs, just pick up their um, yard signs, which I'll mention later as well. And a post-walk dessert and evaluation meeting we host at our home. Usually by then it's cold and we have a fireplace fire and fattening desserts and we have a good time talking about our walk. So that sort of ties that up. And we send out an evaluation for all the teens. Um, in their busy schedules, they move from one thing to the other, but they do get back to us on some evaluations. 
And all committee members make personal contacts to get the message out. They help with all kinds of things. And the pictures just show you some of our um, adult committee on the left. Um, in the middle, some of our teens having a great time in the summertime. And on the right, it's a mixture of adults and teens. So um, we have a good, good calendar. And they do come out to meetings. And we really appreciate what they do. And we'll see the next slide now. This diagram shows how we use church will service materials and resources as a starting point. We share the story of crop walks with everyone, everywhere, and in every way. <laughs> and I tend to like things like telephone connections and personal face-to-face -face visits, mail, snail mail, letters, invitations, things like this, emails to the individual sent out, and then I, I have my social media chair work on the networking. <laughs> Um, I run the meetings and the kickoff rally with a lot of help. And I do some education um, in the community if people would need a speaker or during summer CCD camps, things like this, and school clubs. They sometimes like to get a little extra information, so we educate that way. And we always offer the church will service videos that are sent out to use for your walk. So they put some very good material there. Uh, one of the middle schools uses it to do an assembly after they come to our rally. They bring their whole student council to the rally. They go back to the school, write their own little assembly for everybody in the school um, using the, oh, the whole video that was different parts of it, the little short videos. And then they add their own touch. And it's just a wonderful way to get the whole school involved. Um, on the other side of the diagram here, we have the website, Facebook, YouTube channel, videos tied in with Church World Service website, Facebook and YouTube, um, brochures from Church World Service, um, the wonderful educational flyer um, on, on going into schools really was good for us this year. We really appreciated that, that producing that piece of education. We produce our own trifold flyer. Um, just about information about our local walk and partners and everything that goes on. And that's a popular piece. Stickers, wristbands, we produce a red wristband and sometimes a white wristband with our website on it. Um, one of the schools uses the stickers from Church World Service and sells them for a quarter a piece. That's a pretty good way to make little change add up. So think about that one, because people need to replace their stickers probably every day or every other day in school or in youth group or something like that. So that's, uh, I thought that was a pretty clever way to make money. T-shirts and caps. Um, caps uh, are, are popular the day of the walk. We make sure all our committee people have them. And we design our own T-shirts. Notes, calendars, and photo collages are um, another way we get the message out. And we make it personal and customize it if possible. Thanks for that one. And let's go on to our banners. Oh, no, our food, oh, I'm sorry, our um, sponsorship levels. And we can do this pretty fast. Sponsor support at many levels builds the foundation. Uh, four levels of sponsorship. The top corporate level is 2,000 to 2,500. Water stop sponsors are 500. Hunger stoppers are 200. Friends are 75. And we recognize them on t-shirts, banners, and walk day signs, and through our social media. Um, they raise between 15 and 20 percent of the funds at the beginning of the walk. And then we always raise the rest through walking. And the thank yous are included letters, desktop calendars, photo collages that we make up. And the top sponsors come to uh, a meal and conversation with church world service, associate directors, directors, committee leaders, graduating team leaders, and have a good time. And now we'll go to the banners that support these um, sponsors. The top row are our uh, banners that we put up on crop day. And these are our corporate sponsors. And then the, on the bottom, on both sides, are our water stop sponsors. It can be a bank with people passing out water. It can be students from the local Marine Academy of Science and Technology passing out water, but sponsored by somebody else. And uh, the Hunger Stoppers have signs along the way and also signs in their businesses. And then the back of our t-shirt has everybody on it. And you can see these on our website as well. And our special food day collection is Hunger Free with Three. And it started with just peanut butter. And we've enlarged it to rice and beans because of some of the population needs in our area. 
These are all protein contributions to the pantry. Individual walkers are asked to bring the food and houses and houses of faith schools and community groups organize drives. And one school intentionally set its goal to triple its collection to 5,300 pounds this year. And that was very exciting. We had over six and a half tons of food. CBA boys with adult leadership from Dr. Marie Varley's family are all in on it, have been for years, get the job done, and 20 local food pantries share this bounty. And this year, if you'll go to the next slide, they cut the ribbon to start the walk. And you can see them in the top row there. And then you can see the end of the walk with apples and ice cream. Our DJ, who's donated his time for 10 years, and his wife were there. Um, we have cartoon characters donated by one of the local businesses. And then we have our longtime shortstop, the clown walk, who, who does Guidance, guides the walkers and does everything under the sun at our walks for many years. And we have massages at the end of the walk. One of our committee members has set that up. So we take good care and you have a really good time from start to finish and feel good. We'll go to the next slide. And our education and advocacy groups are part of our community building the day of the walk. We have uh, partner programs, um, cardboard boxes, tents, affordable housing. We have displays of food pantries, and we have advocacy for tomato workers, or one.org, an, an anti-poverty organization. We've had Bread for the World as part of it also. And one of our sponsors wanted to do a food drive, so we designed a Volkswagen Beetle for him, and he did it in his dealership. And he's going to do it again next year. So these are the ways we reach out to community build. And um, if you want to go to the last slide, these are ways to contact us. And we're willing to talk with you and learn from you. And we'll share anything. You can get everything off of our website. And at the bottom of this slide is one of the big banners made by a high school, which is one way we draw schools into our walk. We ask the art teachers to do a theme of hunger. And they've come up with some incredible productions. And then the school gets involved. So that's another way to get people involved. Lawn signs, ads and paper, mission teams offering incentives for walkers, and then the art contest and um, education. And just want to thank you again. It went on and on and on, but it's been a wonderful experience. And um, I now listen. I am looking forward to hearing about the Midwest Walk. Thank you very much. Janie, thank you so much for that presentation and for the for the great information you provided. Gee, it's a shame that the the Red Bank uh, Crop Hunger Walk doesn't have any ideas. Uh, oh dear. <laughs> It's we all the, like to talk. <laughs> <laughs> there are lots of ideas, and I think you know that by the number of questions are an indication of that. Uh, let me oh, just dear. start working through those. Uh, okay. And what what would be an example of a small task for an active participant? So you're you're trying to get somebody involved for the first time. You want to give them a right. small task. What would that be? Right. Well, in my case, when they asked me, a friend at church asked me to come on board back in 1983. Uh, I was asked to just get the information out to churches in one part of town. And so I think maybe I had five churches or six churches, and I had to get the materials to them. And in those days, you went around and just knocked on the door, and if they'd let you in, you talked to them and tried to connect them with it. If not, you probably left it in their mailbox <laughs> or something. But I learned a lot along the way, and I got very well acquainted with, uh, with the churches in Red Bank, which is where they'd assign me. And from that, um, you know, you do the walk, and then you do some of the other things with all. They could come and just help put materials together for us for the rally or number the sponsor sheets, because we still use a lot of sponsor sheets. And I didn't even mention online giving, but we do that as well. And if, if a committee member wanted to come on and just say, I'll, I'll help with online, the online page or something like that if I want to, or maybe they'd just like to come on and say, I'll try to get somebody to do food collection to start out, and then it seems to grow from year to year. I'm, that may not be enough good examples, but um, it's just lots of things that people can do to help us set up, clean up the day of the walk. Then they learn what it's really like, and then they get involved at a greater level later on. From Janie, from your point of view, and this is one of the questions that came in, that it, it seems like a lot goes into this walk, and there's a lot of things. If if you're in a small community and a and it's a small walk, and you want to build so you can do some of these things, where would you suggest people start? Well, 
one of the things we have found that really draws people in is to try to get some schools involved. And we first started with private schools. And sometimes they're faith-based schools, and sometimes they're just, uh, you know, um, technology schools or something like that. And go to their uh, some kind of a club, a key club, an environmental club, a care club, and talk with um, people. I talk to my neighbors a lot, and I've pulled a lot of young people in by saying, how would you like to help out with a crop team? And then they go back to their schools or their youth groups and get active that way. So all of you, all of the people probably in small communities, middle-sized communities or anything have a lot of neighbors and friends on the street that they maybe don't know well or maybe um, meet in certain places. And if, if they see young people, I mean, this is really our goal is to pull younger people into the walk. Um, we ask families to walk with baby carriages or backpacks or strollers. Um, and I think in a small town that might be something. Go to a newcomers club or go to a, um, uh, a PTA or go to talk to the young mothers in a church that have their little toddlers there because the kids in strollers have a ball on crop walk day. And um, I think that would be one way to reach people um, and I also think uh, stressing the local partnerships is very important because you can get people there to get involved um, through knowing that they're meeting a need in the in the community. So um, that could be another way. I will. I'll be that... thinking now. I'll probably think <laughs> some more after this is over. <laughs> you will. When, when it's done, you'll have all these other ideas that you thought of. That always oh. happens to all of us. Um, <laughs> You, you mentioned schools, and I'll just I'll give the uh, the the plug that uh, we do have up on the croppunkerwalk.org website under resources. Um, there is a piece you can use for approaching schools, so uh, that's something that's excellent. Folks need to it's know a very good piece. Mm -hmm. um, another question that came in was how often or how frequently do the Red Bank teens meet over the summer? Well. We used to tell them there wouldn't be many meetings, but um, you probably get about a quarter of the team each time they meet. So, so you keep getting different kids involved, and then there's some, they're very busy kids. I mean, I think even 10-year-olds are really scheduled heavily these days. So teenagers um, probably have, from the time they get out of school in June um, until they start their summer program, um, they might have a week. But that might be the week their church group goes on a mission trip. So you've got to grab them whenever you can. So what we try to do is schedule the first meeting together in late April or early May. Um, we get quite a good turnout there because some of them are brand, a lot of them are brand new then because the, the teens change quite a bit. And then we say to the teens, can you meet the last week in June? And we try to have a meeting then. We do a meeting middle of July sometimes, but these are like fun meetings to walk through Red Bank and talk to uh, sponsors, possible sponsors, hand out materials, learn a little bit more about the crop walk themselves because these are kids from different schools and some of them know each other, but a lot of them don't, you know, so they get acquainted. Um, then our social media chair challenged them to make little videos and they love this kind of stuff because um, they really like to do um, projects for school and they learn, it's a skill they learn and um, they become good at some of these things and they learn how to present an idea to, to somebody in the PSA. They sat in, a, in an organic pizza parlor in Red Bank and um, just did their little PSA talking over pizza, you know, and and saying, oh, and yeah, I'm wearing the t-shirt and stuff like this. And they, they, know, they learn how to put an idea together and present it to somebody by doing something like that. And um, so I would say at the most, we started out having them only meet a couple times a summer, but we found a skit needed to be worked on a number of times. You can do a lot of it over electronically, but it's better to come face to face on some of this. We've had them walk across a banner with their paint on their feet and then the bare feet, and then you work a, a message in among that and things like that, so they hang that banner up at the walk. Um, the teens did really cheap t-shirts. And they um, did the local partners on the front of these great big white T-shirts. You can buy them probably four for 
some of them you can probably buy four for five dollars or something like that. But um, uh, they did wonderful art designs, taking a local partner on the front and then putting a, a global part of Church World Service on the back, and we hung them up on a clothesline. And uh, we did it at, at the host school, but um, we think that it can be carried out by offering to have different schools hang it up at different times as an education piece. And um, just a clothesline is all you need, clothes pins and some cheap white shirts and some kids that are willing to sit down and put that together. And so those things take time. Some of them take toasters home to, to make, but they will work together in a group. And we tend to feed them snacks. And we're always feeding the hungry. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to uh, I'm going to interrupt you on that answer. I'm going to take two. I'm going to do two more questions, or still more uh, after. Oh, you want to save some till the end? That's fine. yeah. So I'll save some to the end, but I do want to take two uh, right now. I think they're a little bit shorter. Um, in who okay. pays who pays for the t-shirts and caps that you distribute? Well, a lot of um, a lot of our oh the t-shirts and caps on the whole that we distribute, we pay for the t-shirts out of our treasury and uh, the caps also, and then we sell them. And so we really pay for themselves. They pay for themselves. And the treasurer, sell them. The treasury the comes treasurer of, of our crop committee, um, we get the T-shirts quite inexpensively. We design our own thing, and then we don't have to pay for printing charges from a local person that does that for us. We, we have to pay something, but not the, as big an amount for them. And then we sell them for $10. And we sell caps for $10. Now, when we buy the national Church World Service caps, which I've loved for years, and we've bought them every year, but this year we decided we'd put a heart and soul on our red cap and a black cap. And those caps um, we also sold for $10. Um, we just like to make a flat charge. And, and then I will make sure that the committee members get a T-shirt and the team members get a T-shirt. Um, and that's that's a sort of a wash through, but we usually have more money coming in than it costs us, and so that goes to crop walk also. And Janie, a couple folks have questions related to resources that you use, uh, wording of letters that you send out, that kind of thing. Uh, would you would it be okay for them then to be in touch with you? Do you have those Absolutely. things? Absolutely, that that's could... fine. And some of it's on our website. They should check that first, and we'd be glad to help them out with any, you know, anything that they would need. To, yeah, just just contact us. We, Red we, crop walk at Gmail. We've left this slide up as, for a long time so that people can get that information. And you, based on the questions that are here, you may get an email or two. That's fine. <laughs> we'll be glad to hand them. We love to get ideas from other people, too, so share some when you ask for some questions. <laughs> anyway, no, we'll be glad to help anybody, and we'd like to work together with you all. I, I mean, it benefits the world around us when we all work together on these crop walks. So, um, okay, I look forward to the next hearing about the next one. <laughs> And um, I'm going to save what is probably the most interesting question until the end after Mary's done because uh, it's it's kind of a, it might be a fun one to to end with. Um, so okay, thank, thank you, you, Janie, so much for that wonderful thank presentation. You, and you can tell by the number of questions, which I didn't get to all of them, uh, that that you certainly have piqued people's interest. Um, well, the thanks. There's still more to come. <laughs> We're going to go on. Okay. Our next. Thank you, next, Bill. You're welcome. Our next presenter is. Uh, Reverend Mary Biedron, and uh, let me just quickly move this, advance this slide. Um, and she is the senior minister of North Congregational Church in Farmington Hills, Michigan, a uh, suburb of Detroit. Since 1981, she's held regional, state, and national positions in the fellowship of the National Association of Congregational Christian Churches, uh, both as a layperson and as an, or and as an ordained minister. Uh, she's been the coordinator of the Farmington, Farmington Hills, West Bloomfield Crop Hunger Walk since 2001. And uh, here's how she describes her walk. The Farmington, Farmington Hills, West Bloomfield Crop Hunger Walk, and by the time you get through the name of the walk, you've said a lot, uh, began in 1986. And in its 27 years has grown to include 23 faith communities and organizations, as well as participation by many local businesses and our five recipient agencies. In an area where we are surrounded by other crop hunger walks, our walk has striven to create a sense of community and fellowship within the core of volunteers from churches, synagogues, and community organizations. In 2012, 
our Crop Hunger Walk earned just over $35,000 and covered all of our walk expenses with donations of goods and services from local businesses and congregations. Mary, thank you so much for your willingness to be with us today, and we look forward to your presentation. Maybe. Um, Mary, are you there? Okay, we are going to try to uh, to get Mary back. Um, we had her earlier, we know, because everyone was chatting. Um, no. So what we'll do, um, I think, is I'm going to go back to the question piece. This is called Winging It. Um, and the, the one of the big questions here, uh, Janie, um, mm -hmm. was somebody wants to know what Lug-A-Jug is. <laughs> Oh, what lug -a jug is. Yeah, it is a kind of a cute name. Um, another creation of my social media chair. She's amazing. <laughs> I'll give you her personal email someday, maybe, and they can all ask her. Um, we take gallon jugs of water. Well, we ask them to bring their own. We will give them a sticker, and they lug a jug of water the entire walk. We've had the softball team at the local community college do this. Um, we've had some Girl Scouts do it, and over the years we've tried to get them to learn the, the weight of the things that people carry because they have to walk. And a gallon of water, you'd be amazed at how many kids do not know how much it weighs. Probably how many adults don't know how much it weighs. But it gets tiresome carrying these w jugs of water. But um, some real stall smart souls do it, and I think you can see pictures on our website about this, these gallons of water um, going through town, but they're marked with crop walk and, you know, uh, lug a jug, and it's a very easy thing to do. That could be a small task for somebody to organize that and just talk people into carrying them as a relay team at the walk or something like that and see if it, it can grow. They can get their picture taken with their jugs of water. Um, you know, you can make just a really fun deal out of it, or they can lug a, a load of firewood, too. But we really feel water is such an important, you can't live without it. It's such an important part of our our lives, and we take it for granted so many times that we actually only give out water along the walk, and we we just really try to emphasis, emphasize the um, how far people have to walk for it and how precious it is. So anyway, it, you can picture the gallon plastic jug. Can you hear me now? Have you got Mary? We have got Mary. Oh, Hooray. yay. Okay. <laughs> Some, okay, great. Some, sometimes, need to... sometimes the technology does what you want it to do, and sometimes not so much. So, Mary, I'm uh, glad we got you back. Well, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Janie, but oh, you'll no, get glad over you it. Did. <laughs> Janie and I have made friends in the process of planning this, and I have to confess to you, she laughed when I said I was a little intimidated after I got done hearing about the gigantic wonderful, wonderful program of the Red Bank Crop Walk. So like many of you, I'm thinking, gosh, my walk isn't like that. Um, as you heard announced at the start, I am in a, a suburb of Detroit. We corner right onto Detroit and Farmington Hill. Um, we are a diverse community. There's over 90 languages spoken in the school system. And we're also a very transient community. The automakers, auto companies have moved a lot of people around. And there's been a lot of change in our community because of economics in recent years. Our, our area has lost a lot of population, particularly younger people. And so um, we have flexed ourselves to understand our crop walk as being a product of our community and uh, also to understand that people who used to raise money for various charitable groups are now sometimes receiving help. Um, in our area, we have a lot of separation of church and state. And so um, the six miles square of Farmington, Farmington Hills, and then the one mile of West Bloomfield um, really only represents one school system. And uh, we can be invited in, but we can't really go in. And so that's been a, a different characteristic than many of your walks, I know. Um, there are also a lot of other walks. And we are surrounded by crop walks. So there's one to the north, one to the south, one to the east, one to the west, and then one in Detroit, um, which means that we are really our community doing the crop walk. And so we have tried to be true to ourselves. 
Um, I'll tell you quickly, I got started in 1998 when I came to this church. Uh, I was uh, helping out, and then I was a recruiter. And in 2001, I was helping, and a coordinator got transferred out of town and handed me a huge legal pad with lots of handwritten notes, and I was suddenly promoted. And so now I'm, I'm preparing for walk number 12. And I have learned a bunch of things over the past 12 years that I want to share with you. So we can go to the next slide. Are we going to the next slide? Yay. OK, the first thing is, it's your walk, so it's unique. So whatever you hear us telling, remember, you're not less because you're different. Um, your walk needs to reflect your community um, in terms of its size and its composition and, and how you do things. And let the people involved shape its character. Um, additionally, use the strengths of your people. And you can go to the next slide. Church. There we go. Church World Service provides resources. And I didn't realize how much at first, but it's a lot. And so what I want to say is talk to your regional office about the resources that are available, um, because they really know what they have. And there's even more than pops up on the website. And they can make advice about how people have used it, um, right down to sign-up sheets and meeting agendas. And so they are really ready. They're there for us. Um, look at everything that's available on the website. And look at it often, because it keeps expanding. I feel like every year it seems to have doubled. Um, so take a look at all the different things that are um, on that website, the forms, the graphics. Uh, there is a PowerPoint, a short PowerPoint display. There's just a lot. Um, I didn't put it on this slide. But I do want to say get familiar with all the online pledge process and set up your own walks walk page. And your regional people can help you if you find it confusing. But it is very important to do that. And we're still kind of getting on board with the online. But it has been a tremendous source of uh, information and also in broadening out to family members and friends of our walkers. Finally, on this one, don't feel like you need to reinvent the wheel. Uh, when I do weddings, I always say, you know, the wedding service is the same. It's the couple that's different. That's true for walks as well. Each one of you is, is creating your own walk, and you are your own people. And so uh, don't feel that you need, to, you need to change something hugely. Just start working with what there is and adapt it or make use of it according to your own needs. So the next slide. Gather a team to direct the walk. And you notice I say gather. You need to, you need to bring them in. So no lone rangers. Um, don't feel like you need to do everything yourself. Don't feel like a couple of people need to do everything. You can start small. I know we did. And then go broad, which means reach into your community, find people who are willing to help with the, the largest cause of the walk, with the various areas. Um, make sure your team is very well informed. They really need to know what crop walk is about and what is going on. And the more that you inform them, the better job they will do. Nothing replaces the personal touch. So I echo what Janie said, which is the phone call, the follow-up, every year being in touch with a few new people or an inactive organization. Um, building relationships is, is really a, a key thing in terms of of putting together the team, whether you're a giant walk or a small one. Um, I also found that it was important to seek out people with particular skills. There are some positions um, that need people with certain abilities, like your treasurer or your site coordinator um, or the person who's going to go to local businesses. And if you don't have someone who seems to be the right person, do not be discouraged. Go broader. Check with participating groups and congregations. Janie got started because a friend asked her to help. And you need to go out and really let people know what skills are needed, because most people want to feel how they spend their time is usefully spent. Next slide. Train your recruiters. There is absolutely no substitute for this. And in my experience, it's just the heart of our process as crop walk coordinators. 
Um, the first thing is to be familiar with the resources and yourself and to use them in the recruiter meetings. So a lot of times if people get it in their hands and see how it looks and feels, uh, we often act out the skits, um, we play the videos, we do those things when we gather. Help your people to really know that they are not only raising money, they're building relationships with one another as a team, with community uh, congregations and organizations, and also with the people we serve. And there's a lot of good Church World Service material. Um, this year they've got some cards that really talk about specific people, and I'm going to make use of those to hand out to our walkers so that they feel that they are walking for some real person. And uh, the little um, gifts that are made by the, the local people that have gone out over the years also help connect us in a very personal way because um, those, those relationships are important. Make sure your recruiters know the goals of CWS and CROP, including what it stands for, um, because they will get questions. And the more that they know, the more they can offer. And I believe the more that they know about Church World Service and about the purposes and activities of the Crop Hunger Walk, the more excited and enthusiastic they will be when they talk to the people whom they reach. Um, provide plenty of information about your walk. Um, Church World Service's print materials are fantastic. They do a good job, the annual reports, all those things. We also produce a newsletter that goes out ahead of the big recruit push in the churches and organizations. And uh, it's got a lot of things about our walk specifically, as well as a lot of identity material about Church World Service. And then we also put out a brochure on walk day. It goes out ahead, actually. Um, it's a trifold, and it's got, um, golly, it's got the map. It's got the organizations. It's got information about the local uh, recipients. Um, lots and lots of stuff that's very popular and really causes even the people walking to be able to show this and promote what the walk is as they're asking people for pledges. And then include frequently asked questions. And if you don't think you know what they are, just ask your recruiters. They'll know. Uh, they will have their own frequently asked questions and so forth. And sometimes I put out a couple of versions because more things come up. And everything is shared with everybody because um, if one person is asking a question, then you know others will be in addition. Next slide. Um, and this is just a shot of one of our walk days. The recruiters are a big role in the whole process from beginning to end, and so they are there on walk day to check people in and to, uh, to make sure that they're involved. And right up in the foreground is the back of the head of one of our local recipients. You can go to the next slide now. I didn't put in big pictures of them because they're always a moving target, but your local recipients, it's really important to involve them. Um, we have five that we support. We choose them. We've chosen them specifically to support our walk goals. Um, and you will know what things are important to your people. For us, uh, we were able to really increase involvement and participation of synagogues in our area when we added the kosher food pantry. Um, and the recipient groups need to meet Church World Service standards, and you as a walk coordinator should be getting annual reports and take a, make a point of looking at them just so that the recipients know that you are um, aware of their programs and also so that you know they are um, producing, um, serving the hungry with the money that is raised and is then given to them. We have representatives from our local recipient groups come to all our meetings. Um, they are, have a very high profile at recruiter training. Um, they actually have tables when people are picking up their material. And they, um, they can talk to people. And many of them are also willing to go into various organizations and, uh, and speak about their groups if invited. Again, there's just nothing like the personal touch. We mention local recipients in all our publicity because it's very important to our community. And we also work to build community amongst the recipients because 
um, they are part of an important network that feeds people and cares for people in your area. And we have even discovered that the Catholic Food Pantry and the Kosher Food Pantry exchange things when stuff comes in that's not kosher to the kosher ones. They swap it out with the, uh, with the other food pantries. And they have laughed that this has been a good relationship. Uh, next slide. Don't forget local businesses. Um, they're good for more than money. And uh, I didn't really put a lot of detail, but we give them uh, posters to put up. We give them t-shirts that they can wear <laughs> if they're willing to, to promote our walk and stacks of things to put, uh, to put out at the register or wherever they keep those kinds of things. Um, we also get a lot of in-kind donations. So other than the print material that Church World Service supplies, we don't take any money from Church World Service for our walk. Um, in-kind donations as well as financial donations come in. And in-kind donations have many uses. Um, sometimes you get things that you can use like grocery store uh, uh, cards and things like that. But also sometimes you get things like car wash coupons or Dairy Queen cones. And we find ways to make those work in our walk, whether it's a silent auction or uh, something that we give out to kids who carry our signs. We really try to make use of anything that someone is willing to give us. We recognize all contributions, um, large and small, in various ways. Uh, the big ones go out um, in a posters and also on the t-shirts, and uh, but even the small ones are mentioned. T-shirts have been a great opportunity for us. We make our own. Um, we have a group of people, and this is a picture of the t-shirt, back of the t-shirt. Um, we have groups that, that give money to sponsor that, but also to provide materials. And so we use some for t-shirt money and some to get the paper we print our, our stuff on, and uh, some for postage if we're going to mail out our flyers and newsletters, and then they go on the back of the shirt. Um, we tried for a while having Church World Service churches we sell, but in our community, just getting the t-shirt is a big deal. People love it, um, and they're different every year, and uh, we see them all over town. Um, the runners especially love to get them, so it's an ongoing awareness. And businesses donate all the food and all the materials for Walk Day. Next slide. Walk Day is an event, and it's your event, and so here we all are. Um, you can see that as a coordinator, several of us wear those uh, orange vests so people can quickly find the staff. The little buddy next to me is not one of mine. He's one of the kids who's from there. It's just a big, happy family. Um, on walk day, we, have, we, we used to have people who wanted to run it, and uh, we didn't know what to do. Finally, we have a runner's start and then a 10K walk start, and then we have a mini walk for the stroller dog walking uh, group. And um, we also have refreshments and many other things that go on on that. Uh, can you go to the next slide? So Walk Day is so big that we learned after a whole lot of experimentation that you need someone whose whole job is site supervision. And so for a long time, it's been Earl Hagen, who you see there in his vest, my strong right arm. And he is, he's, he's bringing up someone else. He's got someone that he's apprenticing. Um, on walk day, the you as a coordinator need to be completely available to just do whatever is needed in your own role, whether it's talk to the newspaper or get a picture taken with the TV station or any of those things. So on walk day, we have the recruiters come in and do registration. We usually have high school students, National Honor Society students, service hour kids uh, who we recruit through the uh, youth groups of churches and synagogues, and they hand out the t-shirts and steer people in the right direction. Um, we have a tally room. We, we recruit people who are uh, not able, not very often don't feel able to walk, but are happy to sit with an adding machine and get everything compiled to, for people to see at the end. Um, the police help with street crossings on busy roads. We've got a couple of big, big streets that uh, people cross, and it also certainly gets attention. And the send-off includes recognition of many of the groups that are there, as well as a prayer. Let's go to the next slide. Um, our walk day is a fun time, rain or sunshine or snow. We walk in the first Sunday of May, and in Michigan, <laughs> that could mean anything, and often has. 
Um, we are held on a Sunday afternoon right after church. So instead of a lot of entertainment, we have Starbucks coffee and bagels. And you see everybody walking across the street. Starbucks is right there, and boy, do they love us. So they're happy to uh, donate the, the refresh the drinks and then the grocery stores and so forth, uh, send in the bagels. And that keeps people together so that we can uh, get them lined up and ready to start. We get the walkers to come back in. We used to wonder how we could convince people to come back to see how the walk did, to check back in, to um, celebrate how much was raised, and to understand how important it is to fulfill your pledges. And my treasurer finally suggested that we just really have a whole lot of food at the end. And so we have um, hot dogs and pizza and ice cream, sandwiches. Everything's donated. And people come back in. For um, the 25th anniversary of our walk, we had cake instead, and people complained. They like those hot dogs. Uh, next slide. Recognitions are very important. Um, and you see the list there, donors and participating groups. We put them on our maps. We put them everywhere we can think of. Um, our highest three fundraisers, we do celebrate uh, if they're not part of our committee. <laughs> um, and sometimes it's been people who are involved with a recipient organization. So again, they're a source not only of, uh, of, of having them there to show where the money is going, but also they bring people in. Um, we get Dairy Queen cone coupons, and all the kids who carry the crop signs get a, get a free cone. And we post results by groups at this refreshment time after the walk. And people really do come in and check. Next slide. Follow-up is essential. And I should have put more exclamation points. Um, it is really important not just to stop at walk day. And I know you know that, but I can't say it enough. Um, we try to have a quick turnaround on walk day totals. So we have something we post the day of, and then our treasurer goes back and audits all the envelope, all the top sheets that are handed in on walk day. Um, and we send around an email with all of the, the totals that we had on walk day, because that really helps fulfillment and add-on donations. We also send out pictures very often with that same email. And uh, we also make a CD of pictures that people have sent in to us and get those out as soon as possible. In my own church, our recruiters show them uh, very often for a big report they have in their congrega the congregation. Um, we have also found we need to be very clear on the need for fulfillment with a deadline, with regular encouragement, with to date, we've gotten this much back in information that we email around um, to keep the fulfillments coming in. Because sometimes people just lose energy, and we don't want that to happen. Um, and a final walk evaluation meeting is a must. We go over what went well, what we would do differently, and who will work on leadership next year. And we have that when they bring in their envelopes. Next slide. Um, I want to say, this is the pastor in me, remember that everyone who's working with you is volunteers. I mean, I'm a pastor. I'm not a really entirely a volunteer. But people have given time. And in this day and age, time is more, than, more precious than money for many people. And um, also, there are people who really give their time because they don't feel like they have a lot else to give. And so they will volunteer. And some people will fall apart. And others will shine. And as the coordinator, you need to help stay on top of that. Um, just expect this. It just happens. And sometimes people volunteer or are willing to do something that isn't really their strength. And you want to help them find something that will cause them to be effective and, and happy with the walk. Um, but expect it. Don't, don't judge yourself negatively. If, if you have the problem, you have a difficulty, we have recruiters who have uh, had health problems. We've had people who've been suddenly transferred out of town. Um, ongoing line of communication with the recruiters and with the, the organization or congregation they're from is important for you as the walk coordinator to know how it's going, to really um, understand that. Um, we want to be sure, too, that we thank everybody and that we celebrate their achievements, even in a low year. Um, after, the, after 2008, when the auto companies really were having their very infamous difficulties, we had a very low year, no surprise there.
but we wanted to celebrate it, and my local recipients finally said to me, you know, any that we get is a huge assistance and a huge help to us. And so every little bit adds up, and we were able to stay positive. And that tone is set by the walk coordinator. So get that positive outlook. Remember what you're doing to help hungry people all over the world, people who would not be helped if you did not help via the crop walk, and also how people in our community are being helped. And remind everybody all the time, keep positive, because we're all in this together, and we really are accomplishing something. And I know that all of you do that, and I'm grateful for what everybody who does large and small work on crop walks can do. Um, and that's my email address. And uh, my poor office probably doesn't want a million telephone calls, but if you can email me, I can try to answer additional questions. And I guess now I'm ready to hear whatever questions you have. Thank you, Mary. And in, in keeping with what your uh, previous slide was, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, <laughs> It, it's been it's been a, a very good presentation. Uh, we've gotten a lot of questions as you've been going along. Uh, okay. One of the ones I first have to give a piece of information because someone asked a question I can actually answer for them. Um, if people have not yet done the online part of the Crop Hunger Walk, and as you said, that does expand uh, the people you can reach out to, just by going to uh, crophungerwalk.org, uh, you can sign up or you can go to your – there's already a walk page made up for every single walk. You can find your walk, you can sign up as a walker, you can sign up as a team leader, uh, and it is a way to expand the amount of money that comes in. But a question related to that that came up was, what was the biggest, what's been the biggest barrier to you in your, in your walk to getting people to move to the online part, and how did you handle that? Um, I think that the biggest barrier has been getting the recruiters behind this. Um, so as I mentioned, we don't have this vast pool of young adults like some communities have because those are the people who have disproportionately left our state in the, in the last decade. Um, so I have got people who just are, they're kind of afraid of it. And we finally really isolated that as the barrier uh, at our evaluation meeting just this past May or past June, I'm sorry. And so what we are going to do this time is actually um, have bring up a uh, Wi-Fi connected web page with our little video projector that I'm going to bring over from my church and walk the recruiters through how easy it is. And it is it has become easier every single year to do this and, uh, and actually just physically show them, here's what you do, here's where you click, because I think that if they believed in it, they would talk it up much more. And if walkers go to it, they see these opportunities to send emails to their to selected family and friends from all over the country. And uh, that's, a, that's a really big outreach, especially for walks that aren't as huge themselves. But uh, I, I think that you just need to really show them how it can be done and, and have them believe in it. And I have even debated just going ahead and having the hookup so that while our regional rep is at the, the recruiter meeting, if people want to go and start and, and hands-on try it, um, they can do that. So that's my, that's my solution. Stay tuned for how it went, but I believe that it will help a great deal. Another question that came in related to, you know, when you started, you mentioned all the different walks that are all the different crop hunger walks that surround you. Uh, and mm -hmm. someone, want, someone was wondering if uh, you all uh, coordinate in any way. Uh, public Most relations. Most of them are fall walks, so we don't. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> Although I'm just I'm I'm I've just been uh, been given an introduction to the Novi Crop Walkers, which is the town to the west, and uh, and we will see. I do have to say we have a really strong identity as Farmington, Farmington Hills, and West Bloomfield, so um, we'll probably cooperate. But uh, it it I believe everybody around us, yes, I'm sure of it, is a is a uh, is a fall walk, so um, we won't do that. We did not go with a fall walk because there are so many things, particularly um, there's a big uh, uh, Jewish community walk in the fall, and there's a big, um, uh, what do we want to call it, Relay for Life in our community. And so um, we wanted to stay off of, off of that because, you know, when I started, even, t even, even 12 years ago, there weren't as many walk and pledge things as there are now. So... Uh, but I would say, learn from each other, talk to each other, um, make that community. 
And, and I would say that works across uh, long distances, too, because having worked uh, with both you and Janie, uh, you two have been sharing ideas back and forth like crazy as this has been coming forward. So oh, you were having a good time, yeah. <laughs> the more people can share with each other, I think the better off we are uh, and, and each individual walk is. Another mm -hmm. question, because you mentioned about local food organizations being so involved, um, I'm just going to read this question as the way that it's written here. Our local food organization enjoys the funds we raise for them, but they aren't willing to be involved because it doesn't seem worth the effort for what they get versus what they can get in one weekend at a supermarket food drive. Any advice on how to involve them because I could sure use some more help? Um, I think that it is, and I'll, I will say that I've got variable involvement. <laughs> you know, some groups are really right there. And some groups, I always have to remind them and, and kind of push them. Um, but I, I guess what I would say is look at all the people who are part of the crop walk. Look at, we go down through downtown Farmington, and we walk around the neighborhoods. We've kind of picked our, we've, we go along Grand River, which is this very main road that goes down from the suburbs into Detroit. Um, we try to really be very visible. And that visibility is more than just dollars for all of those recipient organizations. Um, I think that for the people who are um, participating in the crop walk, I believe that that turns into more involvement and more engagement with the local groups. Um, and sometimes it's just a matter of finding the right person in the local group who's willing to be a part. Maybe you don't get the director. Maybe you get a a willing volunteer um, or somebody who is is um, you know who has been part of the crop walk who is also engaged with the food pantry or whatever they are um, so those are my suggestions I know that in some cases it's just an uphill battle but um, um, I do think that it makes a difference if there's a way to get them engaged well another question that came in Mary was what tools do you use uh, at the walk that allow you to know what your totals are by the time the walk ends? Well, so the um, walker envelopes that people get have a tear-off front page, and they need to bring that front page to the walk, and they should be bringing it to the walk because it's got the hold harmless agreement on it. I'm quickly looking to see if I can find the sample, but it's got the hold harmless agreement on it, the little gray box. You want to be sure, sure, sure everybody who is present at the walk signs it. Um, and then we ask the recruiters, this is part of the training, we ask the recruiters to tally on each sheet how many walkers are represented on that sheet and how many dollars are represented on that sheet. And then we've got four people who arrive with their adding machines and as soon as the walkers go upstairs from, from registration where they've handed in and checked in those sheets, um, as soon as they go upstairs, these people snatch them up and race off to the counting room and start tallying them. And they have a system, and I'd be happy to get that worked up. I've got a lady who coordinates it, and maybe I'll, um, I'll get that and I can email it around. But um, they, they then tally that, and then our treasurer audits it. So because walk day, we always make thousands more after walk day. Um, there's thousands more, that, literally, that come in at fulfillment. So you just want walk day so people can see what, what there is. But it's the top sheets of the, the pledge envelopes. And um, we really, really, really push the, the, the uh, recruiters to, to get those top sheets from people. And uh, over the years, we've just leaned on them hard. And now they're really well trained, and they do it. <laughs> but uh, that's, that's a tremendous resource as well, because you can look at the people who are the top pledge getters. Um, from each congregation, those are your committed volunteers. And you can call them, contact them through their recruiter or yourself, and engage them for next year. And that's how we've gained a lot of workers. Another uh, last, I think it's probably the last question I'll end up asking you, and that's uh, just curious as to what type of PR you do in the community. Is there a weekly newspaper, or uh, are there other things like that that <laughs> your committee is involved with as well? Um, we try to get in. We have... Our, our extreme local newspaper um, has, is, is, combines a bunch of different counties. We get in their calendar. We try to get an article. Um, we send press releases. We send ongoing things, background information, et cetera. Um, the big paper, the Detroit Free Press, doesn't do uh, – if they did an identity piece, they should do it in the fall. And we still – I think we've all been working on them and haven't quite gotten there yet. Um, 
We also go on the local cable service. We put up posters all over town, especially in the downtown area. We, um, we have started using, many communities have a local uh, daily like newspaper service called Patch in our area, and I think in many others. And we have really gotten close with the Patch people to get uh, news, information, pictures. They're almost always looking for content. Um, we tried letters to the editor. Ours weren't so successful, but in other communities that might work. We've, um, what else? We've, we've just tried to blanket the community every way we can think of. And um, uh, again, because we're just one in a, in a pretty big pool of, of, uh, or of communities and organizations, it's a little different than in something that's, that's in a more uh, well-defined area. Great, thank you so much, Mary. I want to thank you, and I want to thank Janie for uh, for so much you know, for all the energy and the time you put into putting the presentations together. Uh, I know from from my point of view here, and I'm sure from everyone who's been watching and listening, uh, there's a lot of information there. You've done both done an excellent job of presenting it. Uh, we are staying within our time frame, which is which is great always. Um, I want to remind folks that we will be sending out a link. Uh, to the recording of this webinar. So if you missed anything, like you want to be able to catch the website addresses again that were given or the email addresses or you have people you want to share this with, uh, we will send a link out. It'll probably be about a week or so before that goes up. It takes some time to get these things worked out and then, uh, and then available with, as a link. Uh, also, you'll notice here the link for the uh, SurveyMonkey survey. Uh, the best way for us to make these good and to make them better uh, and I'm, it, it's going to take a bit to get them better than today in my mind, but to make them even better and to make it so that they respond to what you feel you need uh, is if you fill out the survey form. Let us know what you feel was good, what you feel could have been better, uh, what kind of information you think you need that maybe wasn't in this presentation. Uh, those kind of things are the things that we need to know. Another thing I do want to let you know is that uh, Janie had mentioned um, the fact that the local walk there after Hurricane Sandy, uh, that CWS provided support. And in fact, John McCullough, um, our executive director, um, came over and, and was there himself. Uh, the new walk DVD, and I hope that all of your walks use the walk DVDs when we provide them. Uh, one of the resources on that walk DVD is actually uh, a short video of response to Hurricane Sandy in that community, showing how the crop hunger walk money came back home in a different way than it had come home previously. Uh, and I think that's an important piece of what we do. Can Having I throw said, in one quick comment? Sure. Might I? Um, the other thing that, that I would tell you is that the uh, Church World Service also has a program called Tools of Hope. And uh, we're having our blanket Sunday this Sunday, so I'm, I'm really up on it. But uh, don't forget that there are year-round opportunities with Church World Service, too. And now I'm off again. <laughs> no, I would second that, Mary. We make up kits all year long, yeah, and and those really came in handy with disasters here too. The the help kits, especially the hiking mm -hmm. kits, yeah. And Thank uh, I agree, yeah. <laughs> Thank you both. We appreciate that, Thank and, we, you. and and we would also you know encourage folks to to go to the website, go to cwsglobal.org, and I should say, if you have not been to our website within the past, I think it's about three weeks. It is a brand new website. Uh, looks totally different than it did before. And you might want to go check it out, see what's there. It's much more en engagement friendly. Uh, and there are a lot of visuals there, a lot of stories and things you can do. Again, that would be cwsglobal.org. Uh, I want to thank you all for joining us today. And I hope you have a great rest of the weekend. You're welcome. Thank you.